Hi, this pack of slides will take you through the concept of working capital. I've already introduced working capital to you and I've also mentioned to you uh, that it's a very important concept in, a, in any business. Uh, it's as important as the long term capital that we talk about. And uh, we, we, we normally identify capital under two heads, gross working capital and net working capital. Uh, Gross working capital is the total value of current assets. Uh, basically, uh, if just to just to help you recall, introduction to in the introduction to work in capital, I had introduced to you that the funds which the organization needs for its day-to-day -day working are primarily uh, classified under working capital. Okay, so uh, those funds the firm arranges from its current assets and current liabilities. Of course, because long-term liabilities and long-term assets cannot help them. Uh, get those funds uh, all those are meant for long term purposes hence we we normally look at the current assets and current liabilities under this head now uh, okay so coming back to the slide it says gross working capital is equal to total value of current assets on a balance sheet i'm sure you are aware of a balance sheet and uh, to to uh, expand it further a few of the current assets given here are receivables inventory cash and marketable securities by marketable securities we mean the securities which can be easily liquefied plus short term investments which the company has done not the investments which people have done in the company but the company has done and any other current asset so total amount of short term capital needed to run the business operations is this is gross working capital now the net working capital is when you have uh, when you deduct the current liabilities out of current assets is when you get the net working capital Okay, so that uh, you know whatever is the working capital available, that is available for your know, for the uh, for using up for day-to-day -day operations. Well, uh, what does working capital do? Uh, it has a lot of importance, as I said, and uh, a business just can't run without working capital. So it enhances liquidity, solvency. Solvency is is a bigger form of liquidity. I will say here, basically, uh, solvency is a condition which which uh, which. Uh, which uh, you know uh, specifies that a company is in a position to pay off its obligations credit worthiness as in the uh, the credit reputation of the company in the eyes of the external uh, credit givers it generates the elements of cost uh, mainly namely materials wages and, exp and expenses it enables the enterprise to avail the cash discount why so? Because when uh, when there is enough uh, working capital, the company can make its payments on time and when it makes its payments on time, it avails cash discount. It helps improve the morale of business executives, of course, with a strong working capital. The business ca considers itself to have a strong foundation and uh, there is no dearth of funds. It facilitates expansion programs because since the daily operations are taken care of well, it helps in the expansion of uh, the business all in all. Okay, so that's all for now. Thank you. Let's understand the significance of adequate working capital uh, through the slide. It's a short one, but, but it explains a lot of points to you. Uh, we have been talking about the concept of working capital, the introduction to working capital, and we have, we have more or less been talking about the same things over and over. Now, this slide also re-emphasizes on, uh, on, on certain points which you've already covered, and obviously take you, uh, takes you through a few more new points. So uh, let's look at this here. Yeah, so this is about the solvency of the business. Okay, research and innovation shows up here, but let's take it towards the end. So uh, significance of working capital, it's solvency. It, it uh, ensures solvency of the business. I already discussed this with you in the previous slide wherein uh, see uh, it is it's like this there are certain factors which which affect the business directly and there are others which affect it indirectly by the very fact that the business is going on smoothly in fact a lot of things fall in place and solvency of business is one of them in fact uh, you know if if the uh, short term payments if the daily operations are all going on well or it it ensures uh, it 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 uh, gives a lot of uh, uh, of comfort to the to the external parties and uh, it it uh, uh, you know it, it it puts less pressure on the books of accounts and hence it it helps in the solvency of the business cash discount i already discussed this whenever you have uh, payments uh, getting done on time uh, the vendors give the business cash discount goodwill of the business obviously is a repetition of the business which which gets built up with uh, good working capital management 
then liquidity yes liquidity as i said solvency uh, when liquidity is is an is uh, amplified is when we get to get to solvency so liquidity is also uh, 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 liquidity also ensures timely payment of uh, obligations if at all uh, especially to the lenders easy loan when the book size uh, when the book is in shape working capital is well managed uh, the lenders would also like to extend loan to the business meeting unseen contingencies yes that also comes true when you have liquidity when you have uh, well managed working capital uh, any unseen contingencies can be met up well regular supply of raw materials which which may possibly get hampered because of deficient working capital and uh, high morale when everything goes well the morale of the employees is uh, is high they are they are charged up they are excited to work regular payment of commitments that happens automatically i discussed this when we were discussing solvency good relations with banks and financial institutions of course easy loan itself specifies that banks and financial institutions hold the organization in high esteem and and they maintain they want to maintain relations with that particular organization exploitation of favorable market conditions uh, whenever there is a market uh, condition which is in your favor you would you uh, your when i say in your favor it means in the business favor the business would like to would uh, would be in a position to exploit it timely and make the best out of it increased fixed asset productivity uh, fixed asset productivity increases because uh, you are able to utilize its potential to the uh, to the maximum because of better management of working capital research and innovation uh, program okay ability to face crisis uh, well quite quite well understood i don't think i need to spend uh, time on it research and innovation program uh, when the daily operations uh, are going on well it uh, it gives time to the organization to uh, to focus on research and innovation as well so well the, i hope that makes the significance of working capital to clear to you thank you the session will try and explain to you the evils of excessive or, in, or inadequate working capital well it may sound good to have excessive working capital because uh, that may uh, that may lead you lead you to think that uh, you know the the organization will have enough money to take care of its liquidity position to take care of its solvency to take care of its payments and all in all it sounds good but yes there are flip sides to excessive working capital and let's see how, let's see uh, how uh well uh, uh working uh, excessive working capital also means uh, idle funds lying which is which is an interest loss to the company it uh, the company cannot earn a proper rate of return on its investments because of because of interest loss and because the funds are not getting utilized in any productive uh, in, in in any any productive activities and then there can be an unnecessary purchase of inventories in the bulk by the by the organization uh there can be uh, there can be a uh, 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 you know a question mark on the company's goodwill and it can also affect the share price of the company that's because uh, because the company is not earning a proper rate of return there is an interest loss that's uh, and that can uh, that can consecutively affect the share price and the turnover ratio so the moment the turn turnover ratios of the of the company look bad the lenders will probably shy away from lending to the company further if at all there is a need and uh, then higher incidence of bad debts of course because uh because lesser working capital may also mean that the company is not really having a proper credit recovery system uh, in 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 place and so the so the people who have to or the or the or the customers who have to pay to the company haven't paid yet and that can subsequently lead to uh uh to bad debts more spend morality can be a question if the company spends without thinking that uh, that can question the morality of the employees and the managers of the company what what is it with inadequate working capital now how is that uh, of course the, anything which is inadequate obviously has has its own drawbacks let's understand here how uh, it uh, what what's the case with working capital growth will be stagnated obviously we know the reason because of the shortage of funds goodwill again of the company gets gets hampered good gets tarnished uh, in whatever case and uh, objectives of business concern cannot be achieved because the because the working capital is not enough the company is not able to conduct uh, the the activities which it which it had thought of short term liabilities cannot be met in time short term liabilities cannot be met in time of course because there are shortage of funds fixed assets will not be used because we do not have funds to use the potential of those fixed assets cash discounts cannot be availed trade discounts also cannot be availed 
production capacity is not used fully uh, that is what it means by saying that fixed assets cannot be used uh, properly because there are no funds to uh, to use the fixed uh, the potentiality the potentiality of fixed assets liquidity position position of a firm becomes a question mark and hence the credit credit worthiness of the company gets decreased uh, the moment we talk about credit worthiness of the company getting reduced we it also puts a question mark on the on the borrowing capacity of the company and that can that can lead to uh, to um, bad performance i hope this is clear thank you let's understand the determinants of working capital management through this session uh, well we will uh, look at each of these determinants one by one the credit policy the credit policy of an organization means the policy that it has designed for for giving credits and for receiving credits when i say giving credits uh, it means that uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, for increasing or for for the debtors in place and for uh, receiving credits for the creditors in place so that basically determines the working capital if the credit policy is like really tight then working capital requirement is less if it's very loose and flexible the working capital requirement may be may be high the company is required to strike a balance between the two the growth rate now the growth rate means at what rate how aggressive is the comp is the growth plans of the company obviously high aggressive growth plans mean higher require higher working capital requirement payables pay payables and payment terms it gets it it more or less gets covered as a part of the credit policy still payment terms means the terms uh on which company pays to its suppliers they can they can uh, have different terms with different suppliers and that defines the working capital production process flow how long it takes what all is involved what is the working capital requirement in the product in the production process how long it takes for the raw material to get to get converted to final product and so on the seasonality seasonality of the uh, business means if the business is seasonal the requirement of working capital goes up during the season and uh, it will it will not be the requirement will not be as much when the season when the product is not in demand well that's about uh, that's about uh, the determinants of working capital thank you well what are the sources of working capital what are the sources through which uh, one one can raise working capital one organization can raise working capital let's understand that uh, through this uh, through this presentation uh, I have packed it up in one slide for uh, for your easy recall. Uh, the, we will talk about each of these sources. Uh, we will spend time on each of these sources separately. Uh, now we have spontaneous sources, which means as and when required, short-term sources, and long-term sources. Now this is not a, uh, a very uh, hard, uh, you know, hardcore classification. But yes, this is uh, this is a classification we normally adopt for classifying the sources of working capital. Now let's start with the spontaneous sources. Now these are the sources which are very temporary sources of working capital. Uh, trade creditors, which means when they pay up, uh, the company gets working capital. Trade creditors are the creditors, um, uh, we, we, which uh, trade creditors, as in the the people whom the company has to pay in the later date. The company has in uh, has involved uh, is involved into a business with certain suppliers and has not paid immediately so they become the trade creators similarly sundry creators so when if you're not paying the company uh, cash at the time when you bought a material you are obviously generating that as a working capital and as i said this is a very temporary source of working capital similar is the case with sundry creators now bills payable again the same thing if you're not paying the bills now and you are postponing or deferring the payment for future then you are uh, using that money you you, when I say you, you um, it means the organization is using that money to to uh, act as the working capital of the organization. Similarly, for notes payable and accrued expenses, what are accrued expenses? Again, a very uh, very short term and very spontaneous source of capital, which is like you know deferring the payment. Accrued is something which you are likely to pay, which you are supposed to pay, but you haven't paid for some reasons. It may be uh, due to the understanding with the with the individual to whom you have to pay with the with the uh, with the entity to whom uh, the organization has to pay whatever reasons uh, that is a crude expense now they, that expense has incurred because you have taken services but you have not paid for it that also uh, that money is is also acting as so working capital for the business those were the spontaneous sources now short term sources internal sources tax provisions dividend provisions all kind of provisions 
which means you have deferred the payment all kind of provisions created provide temporary source of or short term source of working capital for the company by creating provisions you are primarily not paying the money immediately and you are deferring it for some time external sources bank overdraft now bank overdraft primarily means where the bank gives the facility to an organization to withdraw more money than the organization maintains in its savings account in its sorry in its uh, uh, bank account now that is the more the simplest form of overdraft to be understood at this level so that's what is bank overdraft so let's say your account has 100 rupees and you want and you have the the bank has given you a power to use 150 rupees you are uh, you are overdrawing uh, the bank account by 50 rupees more and that's kind of a loan which the bank uh, uh, gives to you and charges interest on it then trade in public deposits the same thing bill discounting bill discounting where uh, you know uh, you are the organization is uh, is producing the bill for discounting by the banks and against that receiving money that is also a source of working capital now what is bill discounting i would like you to uh, to refer to sources to understand what is bill discounting primarily uh, uh, these organizations uh, get the bill discounted by the banks and uh, get their working capital from the banks now long term sources include retained profits they are any any time source of working capital for an organization depreciation provision again the same logic that we had spoken about uh, in in case of div uh, dividend provisions and tax provisions external source sources are share capital long term loans which is self explanatory so these are all in all these are the sources through which uh, an organization can uh, raise working capital well that's for now thank you Let's understand what is cash management through this session. Uh, I will take you through various slides which will describe you the importance of cash and cash management in the organization. Well, what do we understand by cash in a in a narrow sense? We all know what is cash. So you all are familiar with the with the with the explanation on the left hand side of the slide, which says narrow sense, cash in hand, that is currency, notes, and coins, which we all are aware of. In the broader sense, it means cash and its equipments that is cash at bank short term investments which means cash and and uh, uh, cash equivalents okay we also call them as cash and cash equivalents we also call them uh, we also sometimes uh, uh, include marketable securities also here which are short term investments which means investments which can be liquidated which are short term and if need be can be liquidated immediately to generate money okay Though that is uh, that is also considered the cash in a broader sense. Uh, what is uh, cash management? It is the optimum utilization of cash to ensure. Now, what is cash for? Cash is basically liquidity. So that's why we say to ensure maximum liquidity and maximum profitability. It refers to the proper collection, disbursement, and investment of cash. Please understand that maximum utility, uh, maximum liquidity, does not ever mean that you should that uh, that a company should sit on a pile of cash okay that's very dangerous that's detrimental for the organization because the company is not doing anything but but uh, you know uh, leaving its resources idle and and hence incurring a lot of loss it is also not good that the company does not have any cash balance in its records so there so it's a challenging task for the managers to strike a balance between the two that is where it says to ensure maximum liquidity it should be ideally maximum permissible liquidity and maximum profitability liquidity in such a way that the profitability of the company is not hampered and that is where there is uh, a planning is required uh, in terms of proper collection disbursement and investment of cash the objectives of cash management fulfill working capital requirement which we have already discussed of so far planning capital expenditure capital expenditure means expenditure on fixed assets or expenditure on all those all those uh, resources which give which give the organization uh, long term benefits so those are planning of capital expenditure handling unorganized costs costs which are uh, which do not come uh, with a notice and uh, the ones which are unforeseen initiates investment uh, obviously uh, proper cash management initiates investment better utilization of funds and avoiding insolvency so we have been talking about uh, a company being solvent and liquid for the past couple of slides now so i'm sure you'll appreciate the importance of uh, cash mm. management as avoiding insolvency better utilization of funds yes as i just now told you that 
excessive cash and no cash both situations both the situations are detrimental for an organization so those are these are the objectives of cash management uh, then we have functions of cash management functions of cash management means investing of idle cash i just now discussed uh, discussed about it controlling cash flows now cash flows in an organization through uh, primarily three different activities operating investing and financing activities it is essential for us to have a control the control does not mean that we have to stop stop the flow of cash but we have to have it in the controlled manner planning of cash obviously uh, managing cash flows which i controlling and managing probably can be clubbed into two uh, because controlling becomes a part of managing cash optimizing cash levels in such a way that uh, that we do not fall short of liquidity in the organization at the same time we do not affect the profitability of the organization now these are the few functions of cash management thank you yeah uh, well this pack of slides is about receivables management uh, for you to understand what are receivables i am uh, receivables are are the uh, yeah the is are basically uh, receivables is a term which is which is used for the uh, um, money which an organization is likely to receive is expected to receive for the sales that it has made sales of product or services that's what is receivables and uh, the manage now you would be surprised to know why, uh, to to kind of fathom why this also requires management this does require management because uh, sometimes uh, organizations sell their product and services on credit which means they give the product or the service to the customer but they do not ask for the money then and there that happens in the deals which are bigger in size and they are very common for an organization who does large scale dealings okay it may not happen with with customers like you and me but it happens with customers who are uh, who who get into large scale dealings with the organization management of this receivables is important for the organization to ensure that its money comes back to them and uh, the uh, business goes on well so it in corp management is is it's it's all about ensuring that customers pay their invoices as i just said it helps prevent overdue payment or non payment when it becomes a non payment it gets converted into a bad debt that's that's for your information it is therefore a quick and effective way to strengthen strengthen the company's financial and liquidity position what is its important importance the company tends to lose everything with poor receivables management imagine you have sold a product or service to the customer and you haven't got uh, the money so uh, you know what could be more unprofitable than what what can be a bigger loss for a company than this it involves much more than reminding customers to pay it's also about identifying the reason for non payment and and acting on those reasons okay so good receivables management uh, receivables management is a process which consists of knowing the customer in advance you should know how the what are the customer intentions and that happens by knowing the customer's credit rating in advance frequently scanning and monitoring the customer for credit risks so if you have known the customer for his for his credit rating and if the customer's credit rating is good that does not mean that the customer cannot default on the payment so it's essential that that the customer is scanned and monitored frequently you have to keep uh, you have to keep the customer relations alive so that uh, the organization is, is uh, organization is in touch with the customer and any changes happening favorable or or unfavorable happening at the customer's end are well known to the organization detecting late payments and complaints in due time reducing the total balance outstanding that's very important for the organization to do by reducing that basically uh, the organization is able to recover its debts on time preventing any bad debts as i told you earlier that any debt which is not recovered for a certain time period gets converted into a bad debt and a bad debt is a is a black mark on the financial books of accounts of the company so to avoid that black mark it's very important for the company to uh, do a proper uh receivables management i hope that this gives you a uh, an overview of receivables management this is all for the slide uh, uh, we will talk about inventory management in the next slide thank you yes this pack of slides will take you through inventory management 
Uh, I hope you all are aware of uh, what is inventory. Inventory is the stock of finished goods. It can also be the stock of raw materials of an organization. We are uh, using inventory here uh, from the perspective of stock of finished goods. In fact, the management of both kind of inventory is required for that matter. Let's understand what are the, uh, what, what are the objectives of inventory management. Well, uh, that means preventing dead stock or uh, perishability. It is, it is very essential for the organization to maintain uh, uh, you know, a particular stock of inventory at one po uh, at a particular time. Uh, you, the stock of inventory being maintained by the organization cannot be taken lightly because excessive inventory leads to dead stock. Or if the if the product is perishable, perishability. It also involves a lot of cost because one, uh, the organization incurred cost in buying the inventory, and second is in storing the inventory. In both, in both ways, organization incurred additional cost. Maintaining sufficient stock is very important, as I just now uh, said. It also uh, should ensure cash flow, cash flow, which means uh, you know it should not be lying unsold. Then uh, the organization should also uh, try reducing the purchase cost of goods. That there are various ways to do it, and there are various quantitative methods to figure that out, which is not covered as a part of uh, your syllabus. But I'm sure as you go along, you would you would cover those uh, methods. Now, purchasing cost, purchase cost of goods can be reduced by by say uh, uh, by uh, in uh, by uh, buying qu quantities in bulk or by asking for a cash discount or by asking for a trade discount. These are way, uh, for some of the ways, there can be other ways too. What are the five benefits of inventory management? Keeps track of your inventory and offers a centralized view of the stock. Controls your cost by making, spot, uh, by making stock reports for analysis of your inventory. Improves delivery by managing stock outs and meeting customer expectations. Manages planning and forecasting by analyzing data trends and reduces the time for managing inventory by keeping records in place. So I'm, I'm sure all these points are self-explanatory, so I'm not getting into the details of these points. They, they explain what they primarily mean. And these are the benefits because of which it's, it's essential for the organization to do inventory management. Well, thanks for now.